Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to Do the Woo, the WooCommerce Builder Podcast. This show is brought to you by Yoast SEO, where you can unlock some fantastic tools and features for the SEO of your client's Woo shop. And Foosales.com, the WooCommerce point of sale solution that helps you bring your client's shops to the physical world. I'll tell you more about our pod friends later in the show, but let's get started as I have a conversation with Evilo from NitroPack. It seems like we can never let too much time pass without talking about WooCommerce and performance, so we're doing that again today. But we also learn more about the backstory of Evilo moving into the WordPress and WooCommerce space with NitroPack, and of course, why they made that choice. He also shares why they went with cloud-based for their product versus hosting, and rounds out the chat with a last-minute Black Friday performance tip. So let's dive into the show here. Hey, I'm here with a very special guest today. I have Evilo from NitroPack. Now, I'm excited about this. Well, one is NitroPack is a partner of Do The Woo. They're, they're an awesome team that uh yeah they they do amazing stuff and i thought it'd be really cool to get evilo on here and kind of hear the backstory and how nitro pack came to be how he got into wordpress all that good stuff evilo how are you doing today hey bob doing great been waiting for this for a long time actually so quite excited cool so we're, we are gonna we we are gonna hear your story now we always start out with, you know, a little bit of the background, you know, what is your background in the web and kind of how did that lead up to WordPress? Yeah, it's a kind of an interesting story because uh, initially when I, when I started, I uh, were very kind of interested in performance from the very beginning, uh, even in high school and uh, later when I was in the university and then I had some personal projects and it always revolved in some sort of uh, performance solutions. But uh, then I joined the, um, as my first job, actually, that I joined a company called Tyson Slabs, which was developing uh, modules or plugins for OpenCart, which is uh, an open source platform for uh, e-commerce uh, stores. Uh, it was really funny because one of the first projects that we got to do there and the, the one of the first plugins that I got to work on was actually a performance plugin and it was NitroPack. So uh, NitroPack is uh, kind of a, an old product if you, if you want to say it like that. Uh, this was back in 2013, the first version that we released and everything... Uh, started rolling from there. Like we started with OpenCart. Mm -hmm. We started as a simple uh, caching plugin, like page cache. But then uh, as we got more and more uh, use and more users and people with more and more problems, we started building the, the product with more solutions. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, interesting uh, limitations that, that we kind of hit uh, back in the day because it, the first version of NitroPack, of course, was uh, the so-called self-hosted solution. Like you download a plugin from us and you install it on your server, on your website, and it works entirely locally. And that actually created a lot of issues uh, because there are a lot of different servers. Like it's uh, an endless uh, amount of configurations that you're going to encounter uh, in, in that space and everybody has like this function is disabled here or you cannot use this or uh, you have a limitation on number of uh, let's say processes that can be executed so we started hitting these uh, walls and these issues and um, over time we started to think like uh, how to uh, think of solutions of how to solve these right and um, more and more we were getting into uh, the idea that we uh, had to reimagine this and be uh, not running on the client servers because of these limitations. But it took some time until we can uh, come up with the, with the actual 
idea how to achieve this. And over time during uh, this was happening, of course, we were still developing the solution and uh, we had more and more clients and with that we had more and more support tickets because of these limitations and issues. And the web, of course, was evolving with that. We were very kind of um, Mm -hmm. lucky to start fairly early in that space with the performance and we grew with, uh, uh, with the evolution of this performance-oriented uh, space in the web. As, as this uh, space evolved, we wanted to be uh, able to, get, to, to be uh, up to speed, right, with the latest technologies, build uh, solutions that are uh, for the modern time. And it got increasingly hard to do this. So one time at lunch actually at lunch break we finally came up with the with the idea how to do it and how to 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 get out of uh, being a a self-hosted solution and being hosted on the client servers and how to make it into a cloud solution at that point we started like uh thinking of okay what are the pros and what are the cons of this right is this going to be uh truly a good approach to go that route and as we were thinking about it, we c- we could only come up with benefits, and there were uh, no drawbacks. Just a quick example of the of the benefits because uh, it's uh, it's a very long list, but I'm gonna quickly share some of them. Uh, we of course don't have the server limitations, and uh, we we don't have to worry about whether we can actually perform a type of optimization or not. So let's say we want to optimize the images with the latest uh, format we can do this. Let's say we want to uh, have a much, much better way to extract critical CSS. Of course, we can do this. We control the environment and we build the best solution. It's better stability for the end user. Uh, Some of you may know, some may not know, but NaturPack is fairly stable with all, even all options enabled. Very rarely something uh, breaks. We get faster updates because one of the issues with with the old approach was that if we want to release a new feature or if we want to fix a bug and push the bug fix, we can push it, of course, but then how long does it take uh, for this to reach the to reach everybody? And we never know how many people might be stuck with the uh, old version that had the bug. So moving the, this way, move, going that route basically solves all of these problems. And it gives us one very uh, good advantage for for the product in terms of product uh, in product perspective, and that is that we can build the solution as a platform agnostic solution and adopt it to to the specific platform's use case. So that's how we actually transitioned to WordPress. We once we get we got this idea, uh, we dedicated time to make proof of concept and. Uh, to build it, and we built it. It worked very well from, maybe not from the first attempt, but like it took us probably a month to to get there. And from that point on, we we said, okay, so now what? Uh, We have OpenCart, okay, but uh, what would be another platform, that another um, system that we want to uh, optimizing to help WordPress is uh, came out as, as the the platform to go then because of uh, many many factors. But for example, WordPress is massive; it has a lot of users and uh, many people on a daily basis who browse the internet. They land on WordPress or WooCommerce sites. So if you wanted to uh, actually help in making the a real impact in terms of uh, site speed. Uh, in in the real world, WordPress was uh, like very like a no brainer choice for us. Uh, if we were able to, to to get there, we we were going to be able to help a lot of people and a lot of um, users visitors will enjoy faster page loads um, every or on a daily basis. Uh, and of course, WordPress has a very active community. These these are one of the reasons that that, that we uh, decided to go with WordPress, and uh, basically it started from there. That's how we 
uh, began our journey into the WordPress world. That was back in 2018, I believe, okay. uh, the, late 2018. So did you have any experience with WordPress prior to that? I mean, maybe more personally? Yeah, like not for personal projects, but um, in Isense Labs, the company that initially started Naturepack, we were doing, uh, diff- besides doing our uh, modules and plugins for OpenCart, we were also doing uh, other, like we were uh, getting projects from clients and some of them were on WordPress. So we we had prior experience with that. And we also had uh, friends working there. We had partners working there. And also most of them were kind of telling us that uh, there isn't a solution in, in the WordPress space, which is easy to use and gives good results. Like there are solutions, but oftentimes, at least back then, they, they break. Oftentimes they are hard to set up, they're lacking features, and they were like, hey, uh, can you bring NitroPack to WordPress? And yeah. Now what I'd like to do is touch on WooCommerce. During all of this was the idea to actually start integrating into WooCommerce with your product. Was this an internal thing? Was this something that you felt your customers were asking for? Obviously, Performance is huge for e-commerce shops, and it was inevitable. You were probably going to end up that way. So can you tell us a little bit more about where did WooCommerce play into it? Yeah, so it was fairly fairly natural transition for us. And we, in terms of marketing, we actually didn't do any marketing. And uh, it was mostly... People needed solution and um, they found about NitroPack. But why WooCommerce and uh, wh- how it happened is fairly natural. As as we had uh, previous experience with, uh, like what what has it been, seven years or something like that before we started NitroPack as the current version uh, in uh, online e- e-commerce, basically. we And with OpenCart, we... Uh, found uh, WooCommerce very similar. So we already had a lot of experience in that space and we were able to identify the problems fairly well, I should say. And uh, it felt f- very, very natural to to go into WordPress and into WooCommerce specifically. Uh, we've been uh, maintaining and building uh, fairly large stores in OpenCart to back in the day. So we knew about the struggles that there are if you try to scale the the, the type of sites that are WooCommerce sites. Uh, if What happens if you want to scale uh, to, to be able to handle thousands of uh, active sessions per second or uh, how, how do you distribute the, the, in our case, specifically the solutions that we were uh, interested in or how, how do you make it perform Good. How, what do you do with the cache? How do you distribute the cache? What happens with the database? Uh, can we handle, uh, and, and how many uh, application servers can we handle? So that type of uh, things we already knew. And uh, of course, we already knew the what are the pain points of uh, running an online store. Like how do you handle campaigns? Uh, what happens if you have a spike in traffic? How, how, how the dynamic works? What are the... Uh, user behaviors, uh, what are users looking for, how they uh, are they going to drop if you have, let's say, slow websites versus fast website, which parts of the website must be fast. All those um, type types of solutions we've already been working on and been uh, solving these problems previously. That's how we um, saw WooCommerce as a very good fit for us. But if you think about the problems with speed and uh, the, the speed of websites, the, the, the solutions and the, and the problems are fairly generic across the board, regardless of what site you build. The trick is to know the, the site behavior and what is what does it mean to, to have, a let's say, an e-commerce site versus uh, to have, a, let, let's say, a news website. Like what are the differences in in behavior what 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 do you need to optimize like if you run a news 
website, you probably don't have filters, but filters in category pages in, in an e-commerce site are uh, something very important. And if they work fast, it's a completely different experience for, for the end user. So we are trying to combine the knowledge of uh, the, the general problems and then the knowledge of uh, that we have an e-commerce specific performance, kind of morph it into NitroPack as a solution. I know this is something that, especially people that are out there building products and services. And I know you, I, I believe you probably touched on it a little bit, but I want to kind of zero in on it a little bit more. The decision you went through to make your product cloud-based versus, you know, hosting. I know that probably was not a light decision to make and there had to be reasons that you decided to go that direction. Can you elaborate a bit more on that part of it? Yeah, of course. This was a very, for us, challenging th thing to do because one of the main, of course, there's a lot. There are a lot of benefits, right? We touched upon them briefly, and I'm gonna expand a little bit more in a, in a bit. But one of the hardest things to do for us was to transition from the standard way of uh, pricing the product, which was single payment, and you get the product for or you have to renew license for support, for example, or for some of the services to, to work. But generally, uh, you only pay once and you have the product. But moving into the cloud for us w means that we have uh, an ongoing cost. So in order to make it sustainable, we had to uh, go with the new model of the, uh, the subscription model. And for a solution... For a performance solution, this was kind of a new thing, like um, especially for when we go when we uh, did it in OpenCart, but also for WordPress, uh, it was not kind of uh, the, the standard. So this was uh, a challenge for us, but um, I think it's a kind of uh, fairly well handled now. But then it's becoming like more of the norm. People are getting more and more familiar with that and they start to understand why this is the case. Because, of course, we have the, the, the costs of running the servers, right? But we also have uh, the costs of building and continuing to improve the product. And people not very often realize how costly that may be. And, uh, of course, everybody wants to get new versions of the, of the product. Everybody wants new features that solve more and more problems, make it more stable, but in order to make this a sustainable business in that space, um, this is just kind of a, uh, a necessity. But that side note, everything else is a, a benefit. Uh, you you just get, uh, for starters, if, if you run your uh, speed solution on your server, whenever it optimizes your site, it's going to consume resources. It's going to take up your RAM. It's going to take up from your CPU which uh, in turn means that you will be able to serve less visitors. So let's say you want to have a campaign and uh, let's say a campaign is kind of like Black Friday, for example. You expect a lot of, a lot of traffic. If you have a typical performance plugin, it will, it's going to just consume some of your resources to do optimization instead of you being able to serve your visitors. So that's one of the main benefits. And then, uh, like we discussed previously, you get much better stability. Um, you, you, for us, at least, there are no limits to what we can develop as a solution because we don't have the server limitations. We completely control the environment in, in which we build our product. So we can uh, use the perfect tools for, the, for solving the problem the, the, the issue, right, for solving the problem. So if you want to, uh, let's say, like we, we very recently launched <clears throat> thing called font subsetting as a feature, which is, again, something that there isn't an alternative out there. Like uh, this is a completely automated way that can subset fonts, which can drastically reduce their size and uh, make your site load much, much faster in terms of uh, loading the text and not having be blocked and it's a, it's a great tool. And in order to do that, we need to completely control the environment. We have to be able to, uh, to, to have this kind of predictable setup. 
So that's another benefit, right? And uh, there's also the the benefit that we can build the solution in the form of an API, like we have done, and uh, this makes it fairly platform agnostic. So, okay, we are now focusing on uh, WordPress, on WooCommerce. We are building our first party integration, but NitroPack is also available, and it it can be integrated with any platform. So, if there's uh, the need to uh, let's say connect. Let's say you operate a few platforms, right? You might be working with WooCommerce, but you might have clients with OpenCart. You might have clients with uh, Drupal or custom-built platforms, whatever. Uh, so let's say you want to you want to optimize uh, these platforms as well. NitroPack can be your solution, and going in the cloud means that you can uh, get familiar with one solution, with the cloud solution, and uh, use it on all of those platforms. So you can be more efficient uh, when, when you are taking more projects and projects with uh, other platforms because you will not have to be to get familiar with a completely different uh, set of solutions for the other platform. There may be no solutions, so you might have to do a lot of work manually there to optimize it and to scale it. So that's also a benefit for, for the developers and for the people that use NitroPack. And again, with the, with the updates, I think this is a big one distributing bug fixes and updating the code base mm-hmm. so when we have it in the cloud it's just uh, much much easier to do and uh, much faster uh, we we can we know exactly how many people got the bug fix um, we we can distribute new features we can automatically keep the sites up to date with the latest performance uh, uh, optimization techniques so a lot a lot of benefits compared to the to the uh, model that uh, you have to self-host a solution. Hey everyone, Bob WP dropping into the show for a short break to tell you more about our two pod friends and to thank them for their amazing support. It's really simple. When it comes to your WooCommerce clients or yourself, SEO is one of the strategic points in helping to increase visibility in search results. And what better way to understand those strategic skills than taking the e-commerce SEO training from Yoast. Whether it's for your clients or your own shop, you start with defining your mission statement using structured data so your products will stand out. The course is not full of fluff or unreachable expectations. It gives you actionable steps along the way. Whether you're a beginner or a pro, check out Yoast.com and search for their e-commerce SEO training. If you have a client who's looking for a point-of-sale solution, consider suggesting Foo Sales. In fact, Foo Sales is the first native WooCommerce point-of-sale to support in-person payments using Square Reader. Now, you can use Foo Sales with the Square Terminal for your client projects, but the icing on the cake is that it not only works with Foo Sales iPad and Android apps, but the Foo web app. So you really need to check this out if your clients have been asking for a point of sale solution or a new point of sale solution. Find them at foosales.com. Make sure and check out both of these pod friends. And now let's get back to the show. I talk to a lot of builders, especially products and services that are entering WordPress and or they're, you know, they're either coming from another platform or they've been around or or they're just, you know, wanting to get into it. So they, you know, build a product and service. What was your experience moving into the WordPress space? You know, there's the community, there's the support, there's probably challenges that come along with it. But as a, at that point back when you decided to enter WordPress and become part of that ecosystem, were there any specific challenges or were there things that, you know, went very smoothly that were unexpected? So... I would say it really depends on the background and how. Uh, what have you done previously, and how familiar are you with uh, uh, with an ecosystem like the one in, in WordPress? Because it might be very difficult or very um, uh, challenging to do if you are if you don't have an experience with, let's say, working in open source, 
working with a large community with uh, many uh, users of all, users of all sizes. But other than that, what we the, what we found and the experience that we had was uh, very good, I would say, because being this big for WordPress, there's a lot of information. So uh, for most questions that you might ask, you're probably going to find an answer very easy. So that's one of the always the benefits when you go with a popular platform. Uh, and then if you cannot find a solution, you, there are a ton of... Uh, groups, communities, uh, or, or even the WordPress Slack where you can just join and ask. And uh, it's almost certainly, uh, you can be almost certain that there's going to be somebody to help you. The other great thing is, I think, the the fact that a marketplace exists and people have easy access to, to the products that you're going to build. A challenge that you might face is like how to, to monetize the product if you are uh, if you haven't been in an open platform like that. Of course, a suggestion would be just look around, see if there are competitors and how they're doing it, right? Uh, so get some ideas. But uh, the, ha- having the the marketplace in the WordPress directory of plugins <clears throat> is, is great, I think. People can very easily discover your product, just uh, make a good description, tag it properly, <clears throat> and uh, you, you will have just, you get visibility for for free right for it's out of the box built in and then you have easy way to update the products uh to the, the plugins uh so you can you don't have to worry about the distribution part so much which sometimes in some platforms is is a challenge right so and and also the the process of submitting a plugin or, or your product to to the wordpress directories i mean we liked it because it's, it, in my opinion, it's good because there's some sort of uh, checks and it, the, your product is being vetted. He, he, does it conform to good practices? Like you will most likely not submit something with security issues because it's uh, checked uh, very well against that. So that type of stuff is also things that we liked. Now with performance and with WordPress core working on performance, I assume that you really need to keep on top of what's going on with WordPress core in order to keep your integration with WordPress smooth. So my question is, do you feel like you are able to stay on top of what's happening in WordPress core? Is there enough information for you as a builder out there to keep your product in the line with what's happening there? Yeah, that's it. Actually, one of the beautiful parts of open source, I would say, because you always have the visibility of what's going on. You you can always prepare, you can follow the development of it. You can be part of it, of course. That's uh, even even bigger benefit of open source. You can be really involved uh, with all of that and you can contribute. You can, if, if you don't want to contribute, you can at, at least uh, be very well familiar with what's going on, uh, be part of uh, the discussion, follow the developments. Uh, if you're interested, read the code, see what people are submitting. Uh, in WordPress uh, specifically, it's uh, great that a lot of the documents and the suggestion for improvements are public. So you can see the direction, like where is WordPress going? How how do I adapt? Is it, is this going to break in the next version? Do I have to adapt my plugin? Can I uh, prepare for this? Like and of course, build the. Uh, if if you are keeping on top of that, you can be sure that uh, you can proactively make your plugin compatible with the next version, or make use of what is coming in in the WordPress. So let's say a new API gets added to the to the core, and you can leverage that and. Uh, build an even better product, even better solution, you can prepare for that. So as soon as the new version is published, your plugin can already be ready for that and uh, your users can immediately benefit from that. So I find the openness of WordPress and uh, uh, what the core team is doing very, very good. Well, I want to I want to bring this up only because we're on the cusp of it. I mean, Black Friday, this will be coming out before Black Friday 
And then we got the whole holiday season. People are selling lots of stuff on their WooCommerce. Uh, at least I hope they are selling lots of stuff and they're being very successful. And of course, performance plays into that a lot. And I think there's, you know, Probably a lot of people have things in place. I would hope that by now they've kind of, you know, prepared themselves because you certainly don't want to be doing last minute things. But then, of course, there's some developers that may have been working on stores that have recently launched and they're at a point right now where they're maybe going down the list, making sure is this, are we prepared for this? On the performance side of things, do you have a tip or two or, you know, however many you want to share at this point that you might want to at least review or things you could still do? Yeah, uh, definitely. What, uh, in terms of performance, what you want to ensure is that you have a good caching layer in place because Black Friday is the type of uh, campaign you don't want to miss out. Uh, you have to be able to sustain as much uh, concurrent visitors as possible. So make sure you have a good caching layer configured. A lot of solutions for that, a lot of hosting companies already have that built in. Just make sure it's enabled, make sure it's working properly. And if you're planning on uh, running a campaign, make sure campaign links typically have some, you know, these additional query parameters. Make sure that those don't interfere with, uh, with your caching layer. So you have to configure it in a such way that uh, these are ignored and your uh, system can serve uh, the, the traffic appropriately and not uh, because this is the so the, the code uh, cache busting. So you might end up having a cache layer, but it's be practically uh, n not effective if you don't configure this. So make sure you have this configured. Yeah, just. Prepare your items and your landing pages. Figure out which are going to be the top products to, to feature uh, and optimize the pages as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's an important time. I mean, there's a lot of people that are, you know, this is a big, big time of the year for their sales and whether they're doing their own, you know, WordPress products or they're actually helping their clients with their sites. Um yeah, this is something you got to stay on top of all the time. So, so you know, before we go, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, you know, anything exciting coming up at Nitro Pack? Is there anything we haven't really touched on that you feel that, you know, our audience really should know about? Well, a lot of uh, exciting stuff is coming in Nitro Pack, but uh, I'm not sure that I can <laughs> really share a lot of yeah. it, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, expect some new features and a, a few uh, big improvements in WooCommerce, some UI changes in, in Natural Pack. Like uh, we are trying to, to make it more. Uh, so if you're a builder or, or if, if you uh, develop a, a website and if you're using Natural Pack, we want to give more visibility to the technical people. Uh, because Nitro Pack is doing a lot of things, so we're working on solutions and, and um, interfaces to just help you see everything that Nitro Pack does in more detail, and of course help you in if you are debugging something or if you are trying to follow so, so, some trying to solve some issue. We're like building a lot of tools in that direction. But other than that, <laughs> yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you don't want to give any details away. I, but you you can always tease everybody with all the good stuff coming. That that's always a good idea. What is the best way for people if they you know if they want to reach out to you or your team in Nitro Pack? What's the best way for people to connect? Yeah, so to connect with me directly, probably LinkedIn is going to be the the best way. Uh, so you can find find me, Ivailo Christoph is my handle there. Uh, and if you try to reach uh, the Nitro Pack team, you can reach us on Facebook in our on our through our page through our group. Uh, you can always open a support ticket, right? Uh, so you can reach the the support team and Twitter at us. Cool. All right. Well. 
I would suggest everyone do do check out Nitro Pack. Um, yeah, and especially if you're building sites, you know, it's it seems like it's something easy to you should be easy to sell your clients on because they do want to make sure their site's performing well. I I believe everybody has that mission. So uh, that should be a no brainer. Well, I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope to have, you know, somebody else back from your team. Uh, Maybe we can talk about, you know, a little bit about the developer stuff or get them involved in the developer chat. I know our dev chat does a lot of stuff around performance. So they always love going back and forth and, and debating ideas and, and encouraging each other. So, um, so I'm sure we'll, um, we'll have somebody back from Nitro Pack on some episode or some upcoming stuff we have um, lined up for, especially in the new year. So I appreciate you taking the time and yeah, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you, Bob. It was a pleasure. Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning in to today's show. I'd like to give one more shout out to our two pod friends to ensure both you or your client's products stand out and compete in the search results. Yoast SEO has you covered at Yoast.com. And for that point of sale solution, whether it's your iPad or Android app or using their web app, check out FooSales.com. If you enjoyed the show, please share it out to your own builder community. So until the next time, keep on doing the woo.